Hi everyone, I'm Marie and we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Oh, happy Wednesday everyone! It's been a few weeks since we've seen you, but I hope it's well worth the wait because today we have a super special guest in the house. It's Charity Vandermeer and I can't wait for you to meet her and see her fantastic creations. We're going to be sharing a lot with you today and you get to learn about her new class coming up. So stick around. I'm so glad you're here. Say hi in the live chat. Everyone's checking in and tell us where you're from. I want to say hi to a few folks who are here already. Hi to Jackie Burns, Rusty Steele, our dear friend Don Edwards, Jessica Danielson, Cindy Lilliard, Diane Bobolt, Stephanie Lewis, thank you all so much for being here. They know that if you participate in the live chat, you get entered to win prizes. And we also give away prizes for people who comment after the show in the comments down below. So I have a couple of prizes to give away from last week. Congratulations to Ryan McCullough in Florida. And I hope I get this name right, Van Goufrey or Gouffre. I don't know how to say it. it. happens to be here in Hearst, Texas. Thank you all for participating. Our guest two weeks ago was Natasha Smart and you win our Bertha Ball. If you don't have that, you can choose the little, or if you already have that, you can choose the little B. And if you have both of those, well then we'll find something else for you too so thank you all so much for being here now the fairies are staying back with no show and tells this week because we want to give all of our time to our guests but we do have our fairy in the field the very funny fairy kayla hey everybody happy woolly wednesday and happy halloween <laughs> It's Halloween today when I'm recording this, so I just wanted to show off my awesome little hat to you guys. And I also wanted to say hi to Miss Charity. I hope you're having a good trip, and I hope you're having tons of fun in the studio, and, and we can't wait to see your class. Um, oh yeah, I'm here to tell you guys a joke too, huh? <laughs> so this joke comes to us from Fairy Alyssa, and um, I won't keep you in suspense any longer. So... Why do birds fly south for the winter? Why do birds fly south for the winter? Because it's way too far to walk. <laughs> thank you so much, everybody. I hope you have tons of fun today. And thank you, Fairy Alyssa, for the joke this week. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Kayla. Thanks everyone for putting up with our kooky antics. Fairy is, uh, Fairy Kayla is always keeping us laughing. All the fairies are our crew. They pack your orders, they answer the phone, they answer your emails, and they make absolutely everything that we sell, and they help us put on this show too. So we appreciate y'all for being here with us today. As I mentioned, I have a very special guest. Uh, we have a teacher, she's come back, she's been here, she's taught in the shop a few times. She is a much loved teacher in the school, one of my favorite humans, and an oh so talented designer and felt maker. Please give a big BFF welcome for Charity Vandermeer. Come on, Charity! So glad to have you back! I, I, I love having you here. I'm so happy that you can have me back again. <laughs> it's been a little while yeah. since uh, being not being able to travel. Yeah, and my goodness. Two, three years. Yeah, yeah. Three, three years since yeah. Charity was mm -hmm. here last. We're going to tell you all about the classes she has in the school, what's coming up. But now's the time to just get to visit and let everyone know a little more about you. What do you think? Good idea. Okay. Let's do that. Right. Let's get on. We're going to yeah. sit down. Y'all get cozy. Grab a cup of tea or something. We're going to get close. And we have so many fun things to share with you today. Um, yeah. Okay. So come on in, y'all. This is my friend, Charity. Uh, I've had the great pleasure of being in the studio, as always, just getting to watch your talent at work while you felt oh, this week. thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's really fun. So I, I, we're going to share with you in a little while the new class uh, that Charity has. But some of you have gotten to take classes. Some of people have already taken classes with you in the online yeah. school. Some people in person because you make fantastic wearables <laughs> and accessories. Mm. And I just want to give you all an opportunity to learn a little more about Charity and how you got started. So something not a lot of people know, Charity. So first of all, she came here from Holland, for those of you who want to know, traveling with her husband, Noel, which is really fun. Yes. But you haven't it. always been a felt maker or a fashion designer. So your first career, you were a nurse. Yes. 
I was. Um, when I was a girl, to be honest, in Zambia, the first thing, the first choices you had to have as a career is either become a nurse, a teacher, a doctor, or yeah, or you got, went into farming. Farming, nurse, nurse doctor, doctor, or, or teacher. teacher. Oh, yeah. So you you take the nurse the nurse box. Yeah. I decided. Oh, maybe it's nice to be a nurse because yeah. I can look after people. I love to be with people. Yeah. So that was my first choice. And that's where you met your husband, Noel. That's when I met him in um, yeah a long time ago, nineteen ninety. My goodness, no, 1989. It's wow. a long time ago. Wow, yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. But then you moved from Zambia to England. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. And by then I had my first child, mm -hmm. and the second one was on the way. So it was, to be honest, it was a new country, the new culture. So I had to learn how to survive by myself. Right. So I was actually very bored. <laughs> and so I decided I'm going to do something in between and wait until the kids have got their school age. Um, then they can go to school and I'll go back into nursing. Uh -huh. So that was my initial plan. So I went to do the textiles uh, diploma. I didn't realize the diploma was actually to learn more about designing and um, it was a broader, it was a much broader subject. Okay. Yeah. So, so textiles, you went to learn textiles because as a girl you made your own clothes, you yes, said, right? I did. And, and you made your dolls clothes. And my dolls clothes. Yeah. I first made my own dolls and then from there I had to make their clothes. Right. And I went to the tailors to pick up some leftovers, fabrics, because that's what a lot of people do in Zambia. You bring your fabrics to a tailor and the tailor makes a dress. Wow. And then they have all these extra fabrics which I went to pick up. And then I'll make the dresses for my dolls. Oh, yeah. and now you, stitching. You, sh you shared with me that your mom would make you one dress a year. Yes, my mom would make me one dress at Christmas time. That's that was so always special. And the most special part, I had to choose the fabrics. That's so, so um, just even amazing. At, yeah, even at an early age, I had to choose my own fabrics. Wow, Yeah, that's special. Yeah. So so you did, just decided to learn a little more, go back to sewing, and you took this textiles class. Yeah. Uh, but well, tell us how that sort of expanded into just a new world of study for you. Yeah, so the textile class, like I mentioned earlier, it turned out to be much broader, mm -hmm. so I had to learn pattern cutting, dyeing and weaving we did a lot drawing and also to do the research of the the trains and everything right so it was quite what i liked most we did also do the knitwear in right. that in that um two years but i just really had fallen in love with knitwear the reason was it was just I could create my own fabric. The knitting. And then knitting. Yeah, with the machine yeah. knitting. Mm -hmm. You make your own fabric and then you create a pattern and you make something out of it. Amazing. So I was fascinated by that. Mm -hmm. So when I finished the first two years of my diploma, I decided on one of my tutors actually convinced me that you can't go back to nursing. You're very creative. You are going to go to university and take up a fashion degree. I was like, no, not with two little children. Right. You don't go to study with two small children and full time. Mm -hmm. She literally convinced me to do it. Oh. I'm so happy she did. And you said that she applied for you? She brought all the application forms in the class. So I had to fill them in and she made sure I did it and then I sent them. That's amazing. And I, was, I remember talking to my husband about it and we decided if I get in, I have to do it. <laughs> if they don't accept me because I had to explain to them that I had two children. And having two children, they had to give me one day free because I wanted to have a day with my Nisha. By then, she was a baby because mm -hmm. I couldn't just let her have five days in the crush. I needed to have a day with her. Wow. So they allowed it. Wow. So I was very happy that I could um, have a day when I worked from home with my daughter. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so special. Mm -hmm. And so how, was that a four-year study program? Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it mm -hmm. was a four-year study you did everything fashion and by then you are more learning how to design so you didn't produce you designing a lot but I did a lot of knitting that was why I decided to specialize in knitwear because we had more hands-on 
Mm -hmm. The only thing that we lost during that time was pattern cutting because you had the technicians who did your patterns. Interesting. So you actually went with your drawing and you gave it to them and they would come up with a pattern. Mm -hmm. So, so how did that bring you to felting? How did, how did felt come into your life? Actually, when I look back, when people talk about my clothes or they are going to um, say, how do you make your clothes to fit people, especially with felting, mm -hmm. then um, I tell them it's because I've got this background of fashion. Mm -hmm. I understand how the body and how things should fit. Mm -hmm. So the knitwear and the fashion study degree helped me with developing the fashion line of felting. Right. Because if you don't have that in mind, felting is not very easy to produce something that will fit perfectly. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, so, so you have some to very have boxy that, things. Yeah. Yeah. So it does help me because mm -hmm. I did that fashion degree. Right. And yeah. when did you first come across felt though? You, you didn't come across it in the university program. No. Where, where did felt first come into your life? The first time I saw felt, we went on the, on the field trip with the students on the craft fair and one lady in England hired, she had a felt on the stand and she was selling the wool, the roving, and I bought a packet because I thought well, that was interesting. But when I went to do the felt myself, I couldn't make it. It was just too difficult. I mean, maybe I just underfelted it, so I just mm -hmm. put it away. And two, when we moved to the Netherlands, uh, maybe two things played a role here because when I moved back to the Netherlands, I didn't have space to do my knit, my knitting because my children I had now three children all of a sudden, and I had to kind of find the space. And so when I came across the wool and I had to do something with it, I decided to Google uh, about felt. But how did I come across the wool? It's because I brought the youngest daughter to the sheep store. Mm -hmm. And there they had um, the Drenta Hyder scarf. I don't know how to say it in English. Mm -hmm. The Drenta Hyder scarf, but the wool from there is much longer and coarser, mm -hmm. but really beautiful to work with. But you can't really do it for dresses. You had to do something else. So I came home with a lot of that raw wool, which I really couldn't make clothes with. Mm -hmm. And I did know that I needed to have an extra type of wood to be able to felt it right, together. Right. Well, now we said so. I think we have a picture queued up of one of your your early felt or yeah. one of some of her early felt pieces. Uh, well, this is quite extravagant for yeah. an early piece. But you were sharing with me that you went to the farm store. You said yeah. you took mm -hmm. your daughter and saw the locks. Yeah. So you went Those from rugs long ones, yeah. to a dress. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about that. So if you see the long locks on the side, that's the, the wool that's coming from the Drenta Heideschap sheep, and they are very long and coarse. So when I had to make them or make this dress, it's all around, the whole dress has got that um, long wool, but it was very coarse, and I used um, the bats instead of the roving, and I was using just all kinds of wool on there. You've got even Wensleydale in there. Right. Because I was just trying to find out how to make clothing using wool. And from there, I started to make a lot of um, wool hanging pieces, which you can see using now, I moved on from the Drent Hyderscap and I started using the Wensleydale. And with the Wensleydale, I was attracted by their mm -hmm. curliness, which was just, incredible so I made a lot of these war pieces which you can hang up on the wall but you can also wear them because in my mind everything has to be fashion everything had to be wearable so these pieces you can see you can have them on the wall but you can also wear them now wow, those are fantastic yeah such color so bright mm -hmm. and beautiful and yeah. so much texture yeah, so those were your very, very Those beginnings. Beginnings, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you would share, she shared that that dress is actually quite heavy, quite stiff, yes, because yeah. the wool was, you were working with what you had. Yeah. Came, yeah. With that, and then I remember once I was standing on the Dutch Design Week, and I came up, I was having these pieces of pictures on the wall, and one of the ladies, I think she's called Lee Edekot, she does the trends. Mm -hmm. makes mm -hmm. predicts the trend she's very famous in Holland about it she saw those war hanging pieces and she commissioned me to make quite a few for her to use for them 
for her trains of taking flight. Oh. Because they look like birds. She just thought, oh, they look like birds. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah they do look so, like birds. Yeah. Now that yeah. she said that's awesome. That's what she that's said. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so Fire Queen asks, uh, do you design a dress beforehand or do you allow the materials to sort of guide you through the process? Uh, in the beginning, I just allowed the materials to do it for me, but mm. now I'm more more and more getting refined about it. So now I start by designing something, mm -hmm. but it changes and it evolves as I'm going. And now sure. come up with a basic idea. Mm -hmm. And then as I'm going, things will just add to it and they will change. Yeah. yeah. You allow, you bring together like a texture and color palette. Yeah. Some, some basics. You have lots of techniques already in your toolbox. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. then I'll just add to them as I'm going. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, fantastic. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we have some more. So you and I were sharing that you began exploring some sculptural felting, 3D felting early on. I think we have one of our early hat pieces, the really uh, singular one. Tell us a little bit about this piece, Charity. Oh, this is a very interesting piece. This one I made when I went to do a class in Hammersfort with a teacher who came from Russia that time and his name is um, Alexander Peling. I went famous. there, he's very yeah. famous yeah. for his hearts and using the Russian wool only. Mm -hmm. He doesn't look to use any other things, so that's what we use there. And from them, from him, I learned how to make these really well felted hearts. And I just loved the whole process of going through making these hearts with him. Yeah, it's it was the first thing I was doing that was 3D. No, but by then I already made those dresses. So because at that time again, I was just exploring felt, woo, what can you do? Boots, I yeah. did them, boots, <laughs> I did the hats, and I did the bags. So it was just finding myself. Like if, it's, if you learn a technique, you have to learn how to find yourself in those techniques right. without just getting lost in doing only one thing. Yeah, yeah. So that's... Fantastic. Those those are beautiful. And I think from there, your felt uh, making really progressed. And we have some more pictures of one of your daughters uh, wearing, uh, let's go to the hat. Yeah, here we yeah. go. Yeah. So this is very refined and very expressive. Tell us a little bit about this. Yeah, this one is also one of those pictures the felt it by then I'd already started to make the these wall hanging dresses even finer because mm -hmm. now I started to use more merino on the top so then the fitting became much better and the hats it was I was just thinking of an African queen I think oh, <laughs> so I decided to create such a hat with the in, with it with it and when my daughter tried it on I was just like yeah indeed and I've got this picture of her in the house and now she's, I find it so beautiful she's beautiful yeah. and she's very young here how old was she yes. in this photo she was 12? Oh, it was 12. She's a beauty, yeah. absolutely. Mm. Stunning. Yeah. And she loved to wear them up to today. <laughs> if I make something and I ask her to model, she will do it. Yeah, <laughs> Mwe, she's there. <laughs> Hi, Mwe. <laughs> I'm glad you can be here for your thank mom. Thank you, Mwe. <laughs> Thanks for letting your mom come be with us this week. Yeah. We're so glad. <laughs> and you. thank you for allowing me to use your pictures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was such, such a treat. Mm -hmm. Such a treat. Yeah. And uh, so, Charity, what really inspires you? Like, where do you get that inspiration from? What do you think are common themes or things that really influence your work? Uh, if you look at most of the pictures, they've got kind of flowers and mm -hmm. they're coming from creating textures that are always coming out of nature mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. I am a big fan of traveling. Yeah. I love to travel. I actually don't like big cities so much. Yeah. So in that way, I love to be in nature. I try to connect myself with what nature has for us. You know, if you're walking in the nature, your brains are just thinking differently. Right. They get a peace mm -hmm. of mind. You calm down and you see a lot of things that you wouldn't see if you were not in nature. Right. So I get inspired a lot by nature and the things that I see yeah. when I'm traveling. I yeah. think I think that's common amongst felt makers. Oh, so many felt yeah. makers, it's nature. But you you see a lot of the world, and I think you shared some photos with us. You shared that just growing up as a child in rural Zambia, yeah. that you were influenced. And I think we have some some imagery for you all. Tell us about tell us about these photos, Charity. This is some of the sunsets in Mansa, where I grew up from. I come from Mansa, a small town in uh, in Zambia. So this is one of the sunsets. 
and I do take some pictures from above the, when I'm in the plane or flying. You see a lot of lines that comes back when I'm felting, so you can mm -hmm. see that those are the pictures I take when I'm really just flying over the swamps. Zambia has got a lot of amazing landscape, swampy areas that really helps me to create textures just by looking at that. So yeah, and flowers. This is also in another picture taken on the lower plains in the swamps when the lilies just comes out into bloom. It's so amazing. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I, I really love the water as well. So you see that when I create, I kind of get the lines in the, in whatever I do, the mm -hmm. lines come back. I think it comes from the fluid and the movement of the water mm -hmm. that you see when I'm traveling. Yeah, never yeah. still. And you, you love to travel. Here's a photo of you on safari. Yes, right? oh, yeah. I love safari. It's my weakness. I mean, it's, <laughs> I really, I can never go to Zambia without spending a day on safari. It's oh. just something I love a lot. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we have, so you shared that in recent years, mm -hmm. you've been, uh, you've enticed your husband to travel a little more with you yeah. and have a picture of a charity with her husband, Noel, here in the <laughs> studio. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad he could come with me nowadays because in the past he, he couldn't when the kids were younger, but now at least we can do. and see places together and yeah. we have something to talk about yeah yeah it's fun i'm it's so fun. glad he can come me too fun yeah. for us to get to meet him uh, now we shared something else from your travel so besides nature uh you shared with us some artwork also from africa mm -hmm. that uh, is inspiring with you so uh, y'all take a look at this and charity yeah. tell us a little more about it this is one of the pictures or the the images i took a picture of when i was traveling in zambia it's the hotel and in this hotel, I just walked in there and I saw these little um, calabash pots. And in Zambia, they are very traditional. We use them for water. Mm -hmm. You put water there to cool them off. And if you don't use them for water, you can also use them to brew some kind of typical African monkoyo. It's a drink which ferments then in these pots. Interesting. Yeah. So when I saw them on the wall and all colored up, colorful painted, I was just really I, I just love them so much yeah. so this is some of the things that just captures your eye if you travel if you don't right. travel you don't see this things. it's true you don't yeah. get exposed no. yeah you don't those those are absolutely yeah. beautiful now i think we found that you you shared with us that you began to work a little bit with pre-felts and we're going to talk yeah. a little bit more about pre-felts but uh, we have a, a wonderful dress here that uh, charity you made when you first discovered pre-felt so tell us about yeah. this uh, this is one of the dresses I made using pre-felt and of covering it up with a wool and silk. So if you look at this big image, you've got where the black is, is all pre-felt, and then it runs down into the mixture of the blend of merino and silk in there. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's very easy then to create a shape. Mm -hmm. You can shape the things very easily with pre-felt, and if you're starting for the first time with pre-felt, you actually can easily get the shaping you need. Yeah. It's much easier to start with as a felter. That's really beautiful. Yeah. 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 And some people are asking now, and I know you answered it part way, but like, what are some of the fibers that you really love to work with? Oh, I love working with the very fine merino. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's 16 or the 14 microns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Those but are here, my favorite. Even you work with the 19. I do. Even yeah. with my 19, I do work with them. But if somebody asks me the reason I like the 16, it felt fast. Yeah. <laughs> it just feels faster. <laughs> That's the only reason I can say it just feels much faster. So. Yeah, it's faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so as you progressed, you shared you, you really stayed uh, very close with a lot of the wearables. And I think, you know, we have some more fantastic garments to show you. Let's look at uh, what this sunset dress. Uh, this is an example. Yeah. Was this the one is like in 500 felt objects? Yes, this, it is. This yeah. is the one. It yeah. was in the published mm -hmm. in a book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This was, again, um, coming back to my travels, what I did even as a child I would always watch the sunset, the sunrise, mm. the change of colors of everything in the yeah, ground. Yeah. Somehow I have the, I always have the feeling that when I walk outside, I look up to the sky. Yeah. And anything, any changes in there, I take pictures. So during this time, <laughs> I started to make the sunset, the cloudy areas, mm -hmm. the, you know, just before the rain starts. Fantastic. So this must have been one of them, the the dark just the 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 clouds before the dark right. just the, like how do you call it the 
a dusk. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then I started to create these dresses. They were actually the very simplest pattern you use, just straight, and then you let the wool guide you to get the shaping, and then you just use as much textures as you can to make it colorful. Yeah, I so love many them. layers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and you uh, did a similar dress, a few less textures, but there's a sunset dress in the school yeah. uh, that people can make, and it's been fun to see the variety of yeah. textures and colors mm -hmm. people have made from that dress. Yeah. And um, I think we have some more, uh, what's here? So we have some more dresses to look at. So tell us about, this looks like one of your earlier pieces. Yeah, this is one of the earlier pieces where I was using the Wensleydale and I just love creating textures on top of them. And the idea again was to be able to hang them up on the wall, but if some people wanted to go for a party. I had a lady who used to buy them for an exhibition. If she's gonna have an opening for the exhibition, she'll come and I'll make one in different colors for her and she'll wear them. Wow. So I've made it for quite a few people who have been wearing them for special occasions, especially artists. How fun, yeah. that's so fun. Yeah. And we have, you shared with us a beautiful collection of dresses that you did for a fashion show in Africa. Is that yeah. right? So tell mm -hmm. us a, a little bit about these. Yeah, these are the, f there was a, the beginning of the f African fashion show in Amsterdam. Um, they invited me to take part and so I had to create a collection for this. Okay. I looked, of course, the first thing that came up in my mind was to create one using the drain to hide the wool because that was from my local area. Right. And then after that, I made a lot of quite fluent and flowing kind of dresses mm -hmm. using the white colors because people expected me to be using a lot of color, but I also mixed it with a lot of white. Mm -hmm. And so we have some of those white dresses here. Uh, oh, this is a coat. Yeah. That's fantastic. It was part of the fashion show, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, tell us about this piece. Wow. Yeah, this is also the. Um, then I started to incorporate the woods in the in the jackets, and this one I made the the photos because I had to do the. Um, no, this was when I had to go and teach in Australia. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I had to take a picture of the jacket that I was going to give a class about. Mm, that's amazing. So we went nearby in my village, and there we've got all this water and the sand. It looks like on the beach somewhere, but it's just close by where I live. That's incredible. Yeah. We do have another dress. Is this, uh, tell us the name of this dress, Charity. This is the morning dawn dress. And I made it for the African fashion show. And there was a meaning when I was making it. It's like a wedding dress. And the meaning of this was, in Africa, we, in the past, less a long, long time ago, people didn't wear white for their wedding. Everybody was wearing African outfits, right. different outfits, different colors. And the last f years, people have been wearing white, and it's, I, I love them to have both. So you can have traditional for the evening and the white for going to church. So it was just accepting or embracing the new cultures that have changed. We like just to see how Africa is evolving as well. Yeah, that's brilliant. Beautiful yeah. and such an incredible dress. Yeah. So I have to tell you, people are so impressed with everything that they're seeing. Um, they said, one person, Devin McCarroll said, that looks like a beautiful wedding gown before you yeah. said that. <laughs> uh, speechless, says Chris yeah. McCarty. Mm -hmm. um, Chloe says, I love the water and snow dresses. Um, uh, people are really amazed. And then someone asked, do you use a felting machine or do you hand roll? Uh, we just talked about <laughs> yeah, it today, yeah, didn't yeah. we? <laughs> Marie was telling me when I was rolling and I told her I don't use the felty machine. Mm -hmm. I hand roll them. There are two things I do when I start rolling. It's really, it becomes like, um, it's my exercise time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I put the music on, I start dancing, I love dancing. So that becomes part of me when I'm rolling. It's really dancing and felting it. Um, yeah, really, I consider it to be my exercise. Yeah. And I also consider it to be my moment because after, if you're making a big dress like the white one, you know, the wedding dress, mm -hmm. it has got a lot of room in there. So I've been laying the wood sometimes for two days. Right. So I've been standing straight, just laying the wood becomes quite monotonous and it yeah. gets quite boring. So yeah. when I start rolling, it's like, wow, time to move. <laughs> yeah. So and bring to, it all together. Yeah, to give the answer, I actually 
raw my work. I right. don't. I have the filter machine, but I don't use it, unfortunately. No, but she will use a sounder in the beginning of the filter. Work. Yeah, yeah. We, we I use do an electric sounder, mm. and we do we do share that. We've used the sounder a lot in the yeah. classes. Many teachers Many, choose to yeah. start with mm. the sounder, so she'll use a sounder in the beginning, but then you roll. I roll afterwards, mm -hmm. and and Charity doesn't take a very laborious approach. It's just the action. Yeah. It's not you know. It's it warms you, you up. But that's why you can dance with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's not more. It's really more or less. You push it and you're not pressing on it. Because if you press on it, you can just break up your back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I've been I felting agree. for so long. Mm -hmm. To be honest, up to today, my back is still okay. And sometimes I make really big things. It's actually learning how to stand and not to roll really too stiff. Right. You more or less right. have to relax be when you're raw. Be, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so people are asking, how long does it take you to make a dress? It varies by the size and the complexity, but yeah. just give us an, an example. Maybe like, let's queue up a little, we have a little dress here, it's super cute. This is a model that we use for a charities class in the school um, called um, Nano Felt Wearables, where mm -hmm. she teaches you how to dye the fabric and the fiber, you make a tunic, and then you yeah. make a dress. So it's really a next level class. Yeah. But like, how long would it take you to make that cute little dress? Um, again, with this cute little dress, I <laughs> use this 14 microns merino, so you can see it has got a lot of fluid in it. Mm -hmm. And what takes long, it would take me at least a day and a half or two to just lay the wool. Right. So laying out the wool actually would take me much longer in this dress and felting will be almost like, let's say two hours. In two hours, I should have it shipped. Right. And that's because, so this little dress, it has, this one has godets. Yeah. Has yeah. A lot so of godets. It's not a yeah. straight dress. This one, it's not mm -hmm. a straight dress. To get all of that roughly effect, you have yeah. to create godets, which Charity does teach in her, do you teach that? Is yes. that in the wearables class? In yeah, the advanced in the wearables, wearables yeah. class? So yeah, in the advanced wearables class. And you start with putting them on a small one, so you can right. actually get to learn how to use them. Right, in the tunic. Yeah, in a tunic. Right, in a sample, yeah. yeah. But this class that Charity has coming up, let's, let's just tell them a little bit about that. So Charity's come at this time. So in the class, she has a sunset dress, which is a really a fantastic dress mm -hmm. with a fancy collar or not, right? And yeah. the wearables where you can learn to um, really create something from start to finish, all the, the fibers in it. But this time we wanted a really beginner a friendly class. Beginner friendly, meaning like you know how to yeah. make felts. Yeah. Maybe you've nano felted, make it a scarf or a shawl or something. Yeah. You know how to make a good quality felt because it needs to hold up. Mm -hmm. But maybe you've not really made wearables yet. And behind us are these amazing skirts longer than we can even show you the the, the waist up here yeah. um and maybe we can just get a, a step back shot so we're going to look here uh oh we're not that high we can't so we can't see the top but you can see the bottoms of them yeah. these beautiful skirts and in this class charity will show you how to measure your body yes how to create a pattern mm -hmm. uh the proper way to make a pattern and the resist uh to make a skirt that fits. And then it's just, it's a pull-on skirt. Yeah, it's to fit. a pull-on. Yeah, you yeah. don't have to have a zipper, no. you don't have to have snaps. Uh, and she's going to teach you all this fantastic texture. Um, yeah. And the most important part of this, you're using the pre-felt, which actually makes it easier for you to work. You don't have to spend two days to lay out the wool. Yeah, so she teaches you yeah. how to make this fantastic skirt. You're going to use silk fabric. You're going to use pre-felt. And yeah, you don't have to hand shingle every bit of this fiber. You could if you want to, <laughs> right? Yeah. You could, you could yeah. but in this class, she'll teach you how to make really a custom wearable oh. work of art mm -hmm. with pre-felt. Yeah. And it's fantastic. Yeah. Now, um, okay, so we're gonna look here a little bit at some texture. Yeah, let's hold this up. So uh, just some features of this skirt are that it's got this really fun sort of semi-sheer yeah. bottom. I don't know how much that shows, but she'll it's show you how to make these textures along the bottom. There are inlays or inclusions here. She'll teach you how to make the ruffles. And then let's show us this one over here, Charity. We're going to switch here for y'all. There we go. You learn how to create the pleats, which flows like I talked. Yeah, you learn how to, you're going to learn how to make the pleats in it, 
and how to incorporate the the yarns which you're going to felt yourself so you don't have to be buying new ones there you'll just be using your own um, wool that you have at hand yeah so um, this class it, this class is really so amazing now this right here is the actual skirt let me see let me hold this here yeah we'll hold this up for you this is the actual skirt that charity makes in the class um, and I'll let you know that she started you came in on Monday, Monday yeah, yeah, Monday at 8.30, and we did a whole bunch of talking and visiting and coffee yeah. and <laughs> and stuff, and um, this was felted really in two days, yeah. right? Like two days' time. So this is like a two-day project. Yeah. Um, so we make it in the blue, and then this is the front. These are the ruffles she just showed you, and then in the back, we have more yeah. ruffles and design, and... She'll okay. teach you how to do all of this with like really simple, simple materials and simple supplies. And it is so fantastic. And they, you know, the options are amazing. Like the colors, the um, textures it's, that yeah. you might choose to, to use. And she'll teach you exactly how to make this skirt in the class. Yeah. So are people excited over there, Jordan? Oh, yes. Yeah. We have a few people who say that I think this is going to be my first class. <laughs> <laughs> this, so happy, yeah. this is a good one. We were really excited. I'm going to see what some of y'all are saying. We're really excited to share with you the pre-felts mm -hmm. um, because we know that it can be intimidating. Now, I took a class with Charity for my 50th birthday, yeah. right? Yeah. And everyone was making dresses with good days and ruffles mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. And I said, I want to make a skirt. That yeah. was me. Yeah. I was, I was yeah. the only person. No, somebody made the second piece yeah. of skirt. And I made a full-length skirt, and I got to just explore and have all the fun I wanted with all my textures. And um, it's a fun class. Now, I didn't use pre-felt, so, and Charity's like, Marie, why are you so slow? <laughs> <laughs> I'm slow at laying yeah. out felt. Um, but this is really fun. Yeah. So you could make a skirt in a weekend and be wearing, wearing it the next week. week. Yeah, absolutely. And what makes the pre-felt is you only spend more time actually embellishing it, putting all the nice designs yeah. on it mm -hmm. instead of laying the wool. Mm -hmm. And after you've done the rolling, it goes much faster. And you've got, like I mentioned, you've got also these lower part of the skirt, a technique that later you can use to make a scarf to go with it. Right. You use the same technique from the uh, lower skirt and you can make something out of it. Yeah. yeah. You mm -hmm. can just be use one or you can use both mm -hmm. both textures on your skirt. Mm -hmm. I mean you've got a lot of choices to choose from this one. It's yeah. really mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Whatever colors inspire right. you. Yeah. Or yeah. you can make it plain like that skirt we have there. And we even so we used uh we also oh right, so yeah. here's a shorter version. We mm -hmm. also use some scraps. Some scraps that we had around, some, some old scrap samples you want to save on save onto those things you didn't finish or you didn't love. We used those. This is a yeah, cute, cute little A line. Simple A line. Mm -hmm. If you don't want fuss with your skirt, you can make them quite simple and they're quite nice as well so in the pattern making section she'll show you how to make a skirt that's a little more straight that's a little more semi or that is mm -hmm. you know really has more of a flair which i think we did on this one right we yeah did we the did great, the, so great, yeah. you can you can tame it down as you desire yeah um so can we make garments in a small space yes you can because the first thing you have to learn is to be able to pull. If you have only a small table, as long as you have a big plastic that fits your initial pattern or resist, you can always pull them and draw it up as you go. Mm -hmm. So work in segments. Mm. Work in segments. Yeah. And then um, Cherie or Sherry writing says, I have trouble with the weight of a large item. Would you mind telling me how to get the wool wet enough to roll but not too heavy to roll? Well. She will show you that in the class because it's not too heavy to roll. You might just need the right materials, yeah. right, the right stuff. So she's going to show you the tools that she uses. We'll supply yeah. those in the supply list. Um, but it, it really isn't too heavy to roll. And it doesn't need to be no. sodden no, wet. You, no. you don't need your mm. piece to be soaking wet. It, it should roll just yeah. by the weight of it. By the right? weight of yeah. it, yeah. 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 We did it quite... Uh, I didn't even make anything wet. I was felting on the carpet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you don't need to have too much water in it. Yeah, we just use enough to be able to 
for the wood to be able to felt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we have we have a carpet here in the studio and we didn't have any mm -hmm. plastic on the table no. underneath no. and there's no water on the carpet. Mm -hmm. Now Devin says, uh, how do you put it on? Does the waist stretch? And this is a, this is a good question cuz so tell them charity. Uh, the first thing is when you finish felting and you're drying it, you don't try it on before it's dry. You have to wait until it's dry mm -hmm. and after that it doesn't stretch. Mm -hmm. And the goodness of this felt, when it comes, when you put it on, it actually starts to warm up to your body, to your skin. It won't fall off. It mm -hmm. will stay and it will stick there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's really nice. A lot of people have asked me that question mm -hmm. and I've, normally I'll be wearing a skirt and I'll just say like, look, it doesn't fall off. Right. It will just stick to you. We usually you. pull it over the head. You put it over your yeah. head. Yeah, put it over the head, yeah. And uh, if it's all, oh, that's all in one piece. And is the waistline yeah. a, a raw edge? It is, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It is, so mm. you don't have to hem it. No. Um, no, she's going to give you some different options, like uh, for, you know, how, how to the finish the bottom. This out skirt. Mm -hmm. The goodness is because it has got no seam allowance, you have your skirt, which you can just turn whatever side you want to wear it. If you use a fancy fabric inside, you get this. Yeah, yeah. really fun. Mm -hmm. This is a fun project, y'all. Now, we use two um, plastic folding tables, so it's helpful, yeah. it's helpful mm -hmm. to have the width you know, to have the width. So get a buddy if you don't have two plastic folding tables, come up, yeah. make, make them together. Yeah. <laughs> or just like I mentioned, put enough, the barber up on the on the bottom long enough so you can just roll it up yeah. and work from one side. Right. The goodness of having pre-felt, you're not moving your wool that you've yeah. just put down. It's all one piece. It's all in one piece. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. After you've cut it up, you can cut yeah. it up on the floor and then you just start working on a small table. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah really really fun okay so uh what kind of silk we'll share all of that with you in the in the supply list the all the materials all of that gets shared in the supply list kathy asked where there'll be a kit kathy i think there won't be a kit because there's going to be as many color options as there are people yeah. right mm -hmm. there's so many but we what we do is we give you a very succinct supply list and there will, is a dedicated shopping page. So you'll be able to go to that page, choose your pre-felt, choose your fiber. Mm -hmm. It'll all coordinate with, with what is used in the Yeah, and it's very project. simple. The supplies are very simple overall. Um, so th this one would be difficult um, to have a kit, a kit for because yeah. so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when is the class available and can we make our own pre-felt? So let's answer that one first. Can we make our own pre-felt? So if somebody's keen to make their own pre-felt, and that means they have some experience already, um, what would you advise? Uh, let's look at it like this. If you're making your own pre-felt from the wet felting, mm -hmm. you can't. No. Yeah. The only way, unless some people have got the, um, the needle felt machine, and they can make their own prefelt because mm -hmm. that's the prefelt we're talking about. Mm -hmm. It's the prefelt that is done by a lot of needles. So I wouldn't advise it to make your own prefelt unless you have a prefelt machine and you can create your own prefelt. Mm. So she doesn't want you to felt it too far. Yeah. Really? And also then okay. the, the quality will be different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe for the first run, you yeah. use the commercial prefelt. And then after that, mm -hmm. you can make your own samples and be able to determine what shrinkage you need if you make your own pre-felt. Yeah. yeah, agreed, mm -hmm. right, because you want to get the math right in this case. She's going to be sharing with you uh, suggested mm -hmm. shrinkage rates, so we're mm -hmm. going to start, do your measurements and your pattern creation uh, based on her, her tested shrinkage rates, so what you should be shooting for and what you should expect, and so that's probably a good guideline until you make your samples, samples if you yeah. want to make your own make your own samples and, and test that shrinkage too so you can hit it so uh kevin uh who's a felter mm -hmm. here in texas asks have you made garments for your husband or for any of your male clients no i don't like to make <laughs> <laughs> no <coughs> no i haven't and no doesn't wear no, any wool. Doesn't wear not even a hat no <laughs> there you go sorry kevin maybe <laughs> the sleepers i did for the, for the winter time I make those. Yeah, I'm so yeah. sorry. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> now her class is scheduled to, um, to go on early bird, uh, December mm. 9th, and live December 16th. So you could be wearing 
this to your Christmas, your family oh, Christmas yeah. party, or your New Year's party, you, you could, could do, do it. it. Yeah, you could yeah. do it. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. So we're going to have the, the early bird sale. The early bird will go on December 9th. What happens, y'all, when you enroll in the classes on feltingtutorials.com, as soon as you enroll, you'll get an email, and at the top of the class, after you're enrolled, you can see the supply list. So you can start shopping the supply list mm -hmm. right then, and then the course goes live in a week. Mm -hmm. If you can get it on the early bird, do, because they're always on sale in the early bird, and um, then you can get started right away. Yeah. And once you enroll in a class, it's yours. You can revisit it as many times as you want. The class doesn't close. It doesn't stop yeah. at a particular time. The teachers make themselves uh, available in live chat. Almost all of them. Charity yeah. uh, charity will be available to answer your questions, questions in the live yeah. chat. Um, so this is a great opportunity to have a fantastic, one-of-a-kind, wearable work of art with some pretty simple materials to do. Yes, yeah. actually. And within after you've made one skirt, you realize that you can make quite a lot. Mm -hmm. Because once you get how to use it and the right pre-felt, it won't take long. No. You'll master this very quickly. Yeah. I'm excited to see mm -hmm. what y'all make. I know there's yeah. going to be a lot of colors and a lot of fun. Um, so listen, y'all uh, follow Charity. We're going to throw up. Yeah. I'm sure we've already done that. Follow her on Facebook and Instagram. She's always sharing around the world. In fact, we asked her what was one of her favorite things uh, about felt making or people have said about your art. And you told us it was really... Actually, it's when I finish giving a class and I see the people's face and they're happy with what, with what, with what they have made. That makes me so happy. Mm -hmm. I think those are the, my, my best moments. Yeah. Yeah, I've got we some, have some um, pictures of her students here. This is my last, in fact, this year in May, I was giving a class. And just look at those ladies. I, I mean, know. It was just amazing. They're so Just to happy. see them being happy, yeah. it just makes me feel good. Yeah, I can't say much than that because yeah. this just makes me feel happy. So fantastic. When everybody's happy. And I will tell you that one of the things that I really appreciate, or I'm going to say two of the things that I really appreciate is one, that Charity makes garment making very approachable. She really simplifies the pattern making process and has learned to uh, the way the wool works and has dictated the patterns around that that yeah. make it very mm -hmm. easy, but also that everyone leaves her classes with felt garments that fit their body so yeah. if you want to get started with mm -hmm. that check out this class yeah. it's going to be fantastic it's going to be so fun we have just a few more things to share with you but charity tell us like what's your next project you gave us a little sneak peek like what's next for you yeah i did this dress i mean uh i brought in back the knitwear in it just to get back to my my roots of uh, textiles but this one i hand knitted the piece and I put it in it and it had something just it's one piece of what means a lot to me just amazing yeah look at that oh my gosh that's mm -hmm. fantastic and this yeah. is for an upcoming show no we did already on the textiles oh, yes yes, yes. So and now just it's gonna be used I think for another for the magazine I'll be doing a, a project for the fun magazine for felt fun yeah yeah for felt fun that's fantastic. so it should be one of them yeah, yeah. y'all watch for that. Please do. Now listen, if you're new to the school, feltingtutorials.com, get over there and check it out. You can enroll for free. We have some free classes for the beginners. They absolutely just get you started making your first felts, whether it's needle felt or wet yeah. felt. We have wet felting over resist. You can make a hat. You can make uh, a vessel. You can make what else? I don't know. There's a few more mm -hmm. uh, wet felting classes there as well as needle felting classes. And we do have a class that's launching um, this Friday. That's Patty Barker's Nano Felt Vest, which we shared with you all. Another beginning wearable class. So this fall is a great time for you to start learning how to make your own wearables. Promise mm -hmm. they will be a conversation piece the first time you wear them, right, yes. Charity? Yeah. yeah. Now, we have, have we been putting names together, Jordan? So we have some names. We're going to give away some prizes. What we're going to give away today is a wet felting activity pack. So it is just a little, um, a little pack for starting to design your own felt, learning to wet felt. It includes fiber and pre-felt, so oh, they can wow. experiment. So you draw a name for us. 
So you can make a little small mm. something. Begin, yeah. begin. Okay, so we're going to give away oh. two right now. And if you're watching the replay and you're still watching, thank you for being here. And thanks to all of our live friends. Comment down below because you get another chance to win. All right, who do you have, Charity? I have. Just to say? It? Yes. This is Maya Schoneberg. It oh, like see, I couldn't have said that. <laughs> Maya Schoneberg. And I have yeah. Alice Shoup. Congratulations, <laughs> yes. y'all. Thank you so much. Follow Charity. Get on over to the school, feltingtutorials.com. Yeah. If you don't know who we are, check us out at livingfelt.com. We have everything you need for felt making, mm -hmm. and including all of you out there making it so fantastic. So yeah. we'll see you in the Facebook group. And we'll be back next week with some really fun stuff we're going to yeah. do together. We'll see you then. Bye. Thank you. Bye.